I like to think that my work should be invisible, but it's not. You know, unfortunately, over the years, my brother Chris and I, you know, we've been known for a specific kind of sound and compression. The band gives me all these ingredients, and I'm just trying to put together this great sandwich, you know. And sometimes we need a little bit more mayonnaise. Sometimes we need a little bit more cheese. But really, it's about the meat and potatoes, you know. We, we want the basics, the drums, the bass, the guitars, you know, to be right here in your face. So I really try to keep the band's sound and the band's integrity intact, you know, and, and I try to keep what I do invisible. Um, but again, there's, there's people that go, they'll call me up and go, did you mix so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, they go, I knew that was your mix. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, I'm knee deep in it. You know, I mean, I'm a mixer. It's always what I've done. I hear the song. I hear, you know, the first time I listen to their rough mix, I'm mapping out what I'm hearing in my head. And then what takes the time is, is getting that to come out of the speakers. I like my clients to send me sessions with plugins in because I want to hear what they're doing with it. And a lot of times that's, that plugin is making that sound, is making that sound work in that song. So it at least gives me a starting point and sometimes I use it and a lot of times I scrap it and, and just start again because may, maybe it's not to my flavor. I've always felt that if I'm hearing something in my head and it's not there in the production, I'm not afraid to try and put it in because for me, what's the worst thing that can happen is the client don't li doesn't like it, you know, but a lot of the times they'll go, holy shit, what is that? That's awesome. You know, so if I'm hearing like a, a part in my head like that's there and maybe I want to move it somewhere else or make a bigger deal out of it, I'm never afraid to do that. Um, and it's fun. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's kind of mixing production. It, it serves so many purposes and, and, and you can create so many different sounds with the type of compression that you use, the amount of compression that you use, the ratio that you use. I mean, it's, it's just something that Chris and I kind of jumped on the bandwagon really early when we were at Unique Recording because Unique Recording had so many compressors. They had so much gear. We had so much stuff. So we just loved to, to go through and abuse it all. You know, pretty much if you weren't supposed to set it a certain way, we said it that way. You know, all the other engineers would be looking at what we were doing going, you, you shouldn't do that. You know, you, it's, it's not supposed to work that way. You know, and I can remember when I was mixing back in the high life, I actually used to put pieces of tissue over the meters. So the, because the producer would come in and he'd see the compressors and they'd just be going, punk. And he'd be going, without even listening to the mix, he would say, oh no, that's too much. So finally, after like the first two mixes, I just put tissues over all the meters so that he couldn't look at it and he would just have to use his hearing. Um, but yeah, you know, and again, this console, um, the 4000 was also very key in, in, in learning and developing different styles of compression because the, the channel compressors in here are so versatile and have such a unique sound. Um, you know, they were very instrumental in me learning about how to manipulate compression and, 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 and how best it worked for me. I'm Tom Lord Algae. This coffee cup I bought in 1992. Every studio that I've worked in during that period of time, I've instilled the fear of death with the staff that if they lost this coffee cup, <laughs> there was going to be hell to pay. And the reason is this coffee cup will keep my coffee warm for about two hours, which is great because I just sip coffee all day. So I make my cup of coffee. And I sit and drink it. And, and this coffee is still hot. And delicious. This cup used to be yellow. But over, over the years of putting it in the dishwasher, it's no longer yellow. But these are the things. These are the stupid little comfort things that are important. You know, like my console, like the gear, like, you know, any kind of superstitious. If I don't have this cup, I can't mix. It's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing. When I, when I used to travel, I would take the fucking cup with me. So anyway, I'm Tom Lord Algae and you're watching the SSL channel.